Harmless phosphorescence does not feel guilty when it kills a gazelle, and I think that means something. Hello, everybody. This is Throw Smiley. I'm asking the important questions, like what did Young say about glow sticks? Who's joining me this week? I'm Josh CC. It's 7.30 in the morning, and I'm already drunk. I'm Brian Lesh, and this is definitely my favorite C.S. Lewis movie. <laughs> I'm Alaric Weber, and I'm not always super easy to talk to. Aw, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Al. <laughs> That's not true. Yeah, buddy. Uh, this is Harmless Phosphorescence. It's the podcast where we watch every theatrically released full-length live-action superhero movie ever made. We gather some research into the production and the source material, then we tell you all about it. This show is brought to you by our patrons. Patrons like executive producers Michael Beckwith and Atticus Burkett. You want to be a patron too? It's easy. Go to patreon.com slash harmless entertainment. We got bonus content there. Lots of it. Go listen to it right now. A buck a month is all you need to get started on uh our basic level, a few bucks more a month, we'll get you a lot more stuff. So head on over there. Um, this week, however, on Harmless Phosphorescence, we are watching Chronicle. You're probably going to want to get this on camera. I don't want to do it. Dude, I don't want to do it. Okay, are you ready? Okay, Come on, yes. do it. Give me a countdown. I will, okay. I promise. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> <It's crap. laughs> are we rolling? I'm gonna get the gum. Pull it right out of his mouth. <laughs> wait, 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 why are we ready? I got this one. Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> She's just looking at it. <laughs> this is my theory, though, is that it's like a muscle. Watch this. Dude! Holy crap! <laughs> That's why I think we're getting stronger, you know? It's, she thinks it's stolen. She has no she idea. Stolen. Yes, it was the black guy this time. Because <laughs> we're working it out. There's nothing stopping us. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, that's just some red neck. What the hell is this guy's problem? Stop! Are you crazy? What did you do that? Well, that was wrong with. Was it an accident, Andrew? Andrew? I'm worried about Andrew. Listen to me. We can't screw Wait, around with this. It's too dangerous. Andrew, it's Wait, not a game. Andrew! Stop this right now! Who's <laughs> making that sound? Yes, what is that? Please. All right, dude, we're going inside. Steve, wait up. Matt, look at this! Holy... Chronicle. Um, Chronicle... <laughs> Was uh, it's a 20th Century Fox movie uh, release? Yeah, hey, uh, we didn't get any half naked Casey in the movie. No, we did not. Like that trailer promised. Yeah, what's up with that? I know there was a director's cut of this. Okay. Hmm. Um, we, I didn't watch. It. I think I watched the director's cut. I think we all actually did watch the director's cut actually because it says it was released with running time at 83 minutes, and this was 90. So, um, I think we got an extra seven minutes from what they saw in the theater. And I'm pretty hmm. sure that I saw a uh, half undressed uh, teenager in the version I saw. But was mm. it Casey? Huh. Yeah. If it ain't Casey, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> yeah, that's. I remember being like, "Oh, this is weird." Okay. Mm. Weird. I I <laughs> watched make this, it in. I watched the same version you guys did, and I didn't see that. Oh, I bootlegged Twice. it. Oh, you oh. didn't watch our version? Okay. Huh? <laughs> did you? Um, did you guys see the post-credit Nick Fury scene? <laughs> <laughs> Where he was like, Chronicle, I want you to come to. He's all, I don't know anything about you. <laughs> oh, fuck y'all. <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, this was released February 3rd, 2012. Uh, the theatrical cut had a running time of 83 minutes. The director's cut is 90. Um, 
It cost $12 million and it made $126 million bucks. How did this not get a sequel? Mm, <laughs> for real. Yeah. Well, because they killed the cast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the weird Kryptonian crystal thing is still there, right? Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe the government took it. That was one of my unanswered questions, actually. Oh, right, because they covered the whole. But anyways. Yeah. But um, yeah. So um, that means, guys, we've uh, talked about when it was made. Are we ready to uh, do the box office top 10 game? Yes. Promotional consideration provided by <laughs> Roy Hill. <laughs> uh, this is the game where I count down the top 10 movies of the week of February 3rd, 2012. Guys try to guess where this opened, and they try to uh, guess each movie I'm describing based on the box office mojo description, uh, where I in leave out uh, proper nouns where appropriate. Um you guys want to guess where this opened this time? How about uh, Josh? Josh, where do you think it opened? Well, that was quite a a box office it made. Uh, number two. Josh is number two. Brian, what do you think? I'm going to just uh, go for number one. Brian says number one. And Al? Uh, I think this probably got a lot of word of mouth uh, return viewing money. Um uh, Number three. Al says number three. We got three, two, and one covered. So here we go. We're jumping in to the box office top 10. Coming in, the number 10 movie of the week of February 3rd, 2012. A nine year old amateur inventor, Francophile, and passive. <laughs> Searches New Sorry, York Chuck. searches New York City for the lock that matches a mysterious key left behind by his father, who died in the World Trade Center on September eleventh, two thousand one. <laughs> that that Maybe. description went in every direction it could. <laughs> right? There's so yeah. much going on there. I think Tom Hanks might have been in this one. Huh. <laughs> a nine year old inventor looking for a Lock. Francophile and pacifist. He's an amateur. An am am it would be funny if it was amateur pacifist. <laughs> no, a nine year old amateur. Yeah, like if there's nine year old professional. <laughs> yeah, you can. All right. I get paid not to fight. Yeah. Uh, um, okay, this is. Um, <laughs> any guess? Tooth the Tooth Fairy. <laughs> <laughs> Starring Dwayne Johnson. Uh, this is called incredibly, extremely loud and incredibly close. It's it's also uh, how my grandma talks to me. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Hanks is in it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, that's number ten. Coming in at number nine. As a police psychologist works to talk down an ex-con who is threatening to jump from a Man Manhattan hotel rooftop, the biggest diamond heist ever committed is in motion. <laughs> How do they know that ahead of time? <laughs> right. Uh, man on ledge? Yeah, man on a ledge. Woo. Oh, yeah, Brian, gets a, Brian gets a point on a ledge. <laughs> Don't, Don't make me points. do it. I'll, I'll take my point and jump. <laughs> Uh, um, yeah. Uh, that's number nine. Coming in at number eight. Oh, this one. Okay. A land baron <laughs> tries mm -hmm. to reconnect with his two daughters after his wife is seriously injured in a boating accident. I've never seen this movie, and I <laughs> was very thrown off by him being called the land baron. That's not what I expected from uh, the trailers. Um, sense and sensibility? No. Land Baron. Uh, any? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it really threw me off. <laughs> um, this stars George Clooney. Huh. Oh, yes. That's the one in Hawaii, right? Yes. Um, Jim, oh, Rash, Jim Rash won an Oscar for writing this yeah. movie. The yeah, Descendants. Yeah, and Nate Faxon. Yeah. This shit was so controversial in Hawaii because there is yep. nary a Hawaiian person to be seen. Oh, no. That's true. Even what's her name was, uh, yeah, it's George Clooney. Emma Thompson. Fucking yeah, Emma Emma Thompson. Emma Stone. Emma Stone, not Thompson. Yeah. She would have pulled it off. Emma Stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, 
I mean, there's a lot of white people in Hawaii, but they are particularly Hawaiian people. Mm, that mm-hmm. That's too bad. Um, yeah. I was just, it's funny because um, I occasionally just will watch clips of Jim Rash <laughs> doing Jim Rash things, mostly from community. And um, yeah. Jude and I were watching that and I, um, just the clip of him um, bursting through the door dressed as the devil, he's screaming, mm-hmm. Gay marriage. <laughs> I was like, that man won an Oscar. <laughs> or on Oktoberfest when he's in Lederhosen. Yeah. And he's like, it's not often we get to celebrate German culture. He's like, it's not often we want to. <laughs> My single favorite one of all time, other than the rapping, pay, the, other than the payday rap, is um, where uh, he's he's doing that like half man half woman <laughs> thing like where you turn yes, it's yeah. like because he had good news and bad news and at the end he's like <laughs> he's like I have to go to the bank later what am I supposed <laughs> to tell them that I have good news and bad news get yeah, it he'll have get it together and then at the what? end he comes back and he's like everybody at the bank loved it <laughs> <laughs> And they're always his sister's clothes. Yeah. All his, right. Okay. Yeah. Anyways. All right. Coming in at number seven. A crew of African-American pilots in the... Wait, tus- what was the name of that movie? Oh, The Descendants. <laughs> the Descendants. Okay. Thank you. Number seven. A crew of African-American pilots in the, Tus- uh, in the Tuskegee training program have faced segregation while kept mostly on the ground during World War II. They're called into duty under the guidance of Colonel A.J. Bullard. Is this uh, Red Tails? It is yeah. Red Tails. Yeah. That's a George Lucas joint, ain't it? Yeah, it was kind of cool. So, yeah. It's like the one non-Star Wars thing he's done since America, since like Raiders. Oh no! No wait, yeah. Willow, Willow. Uh, yeah, he's a he's something. Yeah. Um. All right. So number six. Um, unemployed and newly divorced, Stephanie Plum lands a job at her cousin's bail bond business, where her first assignment puts her on the trail of a wanted local cop from her romantic past. <laughs> this is, oh, this stars Catherine Heigl. Oh my this, god. This sounds so trashy. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 look, it looks terrible. I don't know. It's called One for the Money. <laughs> it should just be Blonde Lady movie. Yeah. Oh, no, no. She she dyed her hair brunette this time. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so dynamic. She's I, like I, Daniel Day-Lewis. She could do anything. <laughs> of Grey's Anatomy <laughs> or whatever she was up. Uh, um, number, uh, shit, what number is this? Okay, number five. When human forces discover the existence of the vampire and lichen clans, a war to eradicate both species commences. The vampire warrior Selene leads the battle against humankind. I remember this. It's Underworld something. <laughs> it is Underworld something. Anybody have? Anybody want to guess on what the uh, the the colon is on this one? Something about lichens, right? No, no, lichen isn't in the title. You're not in the deck. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> underworld. Uh, underworld. Awakening. Uh, okay. This is, um, yeah, this is the one where, <laughs> where, where Robert De Niro gets woken up by Robin Williams. <laughs> or am I mixing up Awakenings and Patch Adams? <laughs> uh, uh, coming in at number four, opening this week. In small town Alaska, a news reporter recruits his ex-girlfriend, a Greenpeace volunteer, on a campaign to save a family of gray whales trapped by rapidly forming ice in the Arctic Circle. John Krasinski was in this, right? Oh, maybe. I, I literally get the tiniest uh, um, yeah. thumbnail posters that look like, and no actual information on Box Office Mojo. It's inspired by the incredible true story. <laughs> uh. It's two words. The first one uh, describes the second. Oh, like m- miracle. Yeah, uh, yeah, almost there. 
Miracle in the Ice or mi Miracle <laughs> Ice? <laughs> the mi miracle. Big, big, Miraculous Miracle. Big Miracle. Oh, Big Miracle. <laughs> yeah, like a whale sized bear. Yeah, because the whales are big. Like we need another rescuing a whale movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> coming in at number three this week. After their plane crashes in Alaska, six oil workers are led by a skilled huntsman to survival, but a pack of merciless wolves haunts their every step. <laughs> that Liam Neeson movie, right? Yeah. The Gray? Yes, The Gray. Yeah, The yeah. Gray. Merciless. That's where he fights, he fights a wolf with like a beer can in his hand or something. Yeah, something like that. Or it's that. like a beer bottle. Yeah, he has like sharp, pointy things. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. circling his camp. And, yeah. <laughs> but merciless, I don't think that's the, an appropriate adjective for yeah, an, an animal. The wolves are merciless. Yeah, They're like, hey, food. It applies to it, it applies it's nature. Choice. Right. Yeah. Hungry. You know? Yeah, it's not a mercy type situation. <laughs> it's underworld, the gray, <laughs> where he fights the, the lichens. <laughs> a wolf doesn't feel bad when it kills a human. <laughs> I think that means yeah, something. Or the same. <laughs> I think it means I something. I think that means... Okay, we'll get into that. But I think that means something that's the funniest shit ever in context. All right. Um, number two. Opening this week at number two. A young solicitor travels to a remote village where he discovers that the vengeful ghost of a scorned woman is terrorizing the locals. This is a traveling salesman who stumbles across <laughs> a vengeful ghost in a town. Why doesn't he just leave and go to a different town? It's uh, this is Paper Moon. No, uh, it stars it stars uh, Daniel Radcliffe. Uh, Harry Potter and the <laughs> the vengeful ghost traveling in the small... ghosts. <laughs> yeah, uh, Harry Potter and the I'm trying to be an actor, right. Uh, it's called The Woman in Black. All right. <laughs> yeah, so think I about no that. no argument there. Yeah. <laughs> um, and opening at number one, three high school friends gain superpowers after making an incredible discovery. Right. <laughs> an incredible discovery. It's like they're in the Fantastic Four doing the experiments. Um, <laughs> soon they find their lives spinning out of control. And they're bond tested as they embrace their darker sides. Hmm. Uh, Chronicle opening at number one. And that is our box office top 10 for the week. Um, so that brings us to uh, the movie itself. Um, uh, let's see. We've got Josh Trank as the director and story by credit. He thought of this while he was in high school. Mm, makes uh, sense. Yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's totally the kind of thing you think about when you're in high school. Um, Josh Trank, his dad's a filmmaker. His uh, his stepmother is J Judy Toll, <laughs> who is a uh, comedian. Um she, uh, let's see, she's on, she was a writer on Sex and the City, Boy Meets World. So basically, Josh Trank is a Hollywood kid who went to film school and <laughs> called his famous friend, Max Landis, the son of John right. Landis, to help write Good. this. The exact same thing and situation. Yeah. You know, famous parents, just, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So um, these two kids of famous parents um, got this movie bankrolled. Max Landis um, is uh, has uh, FYI, everybody. Max Landis, son of John Landis, um, who uh, uh, is a big friend of OSHA, um, is uh, recently been canceled due to the fact that he rapes girls. So. <laughs> Max Landis? Yep. Wow, I thought it was J that Jason Reitman dude, but maybe it's both. Hmm. Oh, that's fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, well, and looking at a picture of Mac Land Max Landis, I'm like, yeah. He Actually, he looks like a creepy George Harrison. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> uh, 
He does. <laughs> yeah. Like a carnival sideshow, George Harrison. Yeah, like if George Harrison mated with a carny. <laughs> That's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, so, uh, um, yeah. At they, least we still have Max Brooks. <laughs> yeah. He hasn't done anything. For real. <laughs> Though, uh, I mean, yeah. seriously, the Landis family in general can fuck right off. John Landis, as great of a filmmaker as he was with that shit on the Twilight Zone, like, fuck that guy. Um, well, yeah, he was a notorious prick despite what he made. Yeah. Uh, so written <laughs> written by Max Landis and Josh Trank, directed by Josh Trank. We will see Josh Trank again when we do a fant four stick. <laughs> <laughs> he, oh, and Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, Michael B. Yeah, back with his buddy Michael B. Jordan for Fant Four Stick. That's coming up uh, probably in a few months. We'll get to that one. Um, so uh, this movie stars Dane DeHaan as Andrew Detmer. Uh, we'll see him again as Harry Osborn oh. in The Amazing mm. Spider Man. Um, he was also, uh, in Valyrian in the city of a thousand planets, um, cure for wellness kid works, does some work. Good for him. He was, he was good. He was fine. Um, uh, Alex Russell as Matt, Matt Garrity. Um, since 2017, he's been in the, uh, I bet you anything that's that a CBS series. Yeah. The CBS series SWAT. So he's getting a <laughs> weekly paycheck. Um, Sweat. <laughs> Sweat. Uh, Michael B. Jordan as Steve Montgomery. Mikey B. We will see him several times again. And like we said, in Fant Four Stick, where he plays Johnny Storm. Kill uh, was this before or after Fruitvale Station? Um, I don't know. Um, he got a lot of acclaim for that. That was him, right? Uh, yeah. This was before. Okay, cool. Uh, for Vale Station was next year, 2013. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, Michael B. Jordan. I mean, of course, he was. Um, Friday Night Lights is where he s- first started getting noticed. Oh dang, he was in Red Tails. Oh wow, he had two movies this week. That's awesome. Huh. Wow. Um, wow. <laughs> and maybe syphilis, depending on the Tuskegee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Fruit Vale Station was later. Okay. So, um, yeah. Uh, I mean, oh, and of course he plays, um, he plays Creed, not Apollo, but Donnie Creed. <laughs> That's a good movie. Don't Creed hate. <laughs> no, I'm not. It's just I the guy his name's Donny Creed. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. I've the yeah. I've I keep thinking of him as Apollo Jr., but no, <laughs> Donny. Um <laughs> uh Michael Kelly um played Richard Detmer. We have seen him before. Um oh yeah. Numerous He's times. He's dug on House of Cards. Yeah, yeah, House of Cards. We've seen him on this show numerous times. Um, mm-hmm. Let's see. He was in uh, Defendor. Oh, maybe not numerous times. We saw him in something else other than Defendor. I can't think of what it was. Maybe it was a monthly movie. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, a famous character actor. He's been working longer than people think. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's been around for a long time, Um, since the 90s at least. Um, With varying amounts of hair. That's also what makes it confusing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, but Doug on uh, House of Cards is where I first noticed him personally. Uh, athlete, ath- athlete, Ashley so Hinch. We're, we're, we're going to see him again in Man of Steel. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Ashley Hinshaw's Casey. Um, sure. Her oh, ba- oh, Unbreakable. He That's what we saw him oh, in. Unbreakable. Yeah, he, was, uh, he was the ER doctor. I knew there was something else. Okay, yeah. Ashley Hinshaw, um, she was, uh, let's see, her, kind of her breakout was about Cherry, um, um, which actually came out the same year as this. Um, Let's see. uh, Oh, she played Power Girl in a short film, The Death and Return of Superman. Interesting. Um, Let's see, she was uh, on Gossip Girl. 
Uh, I think that's probably where she's... No, she just played herself on Gossip Girl. I don't know. I feel like I know her, but I, now that I'm looking at her uh, her credits, I'm not sure what I know her from. I feel like I never got a good fix on her face. That I feel like she wasn't on screen visually very much. No, I mean, she wasn't. Um, hmm. So as far as recognizing her. Yeah. Uh, I didn't. Yeah. She, let's, uh, she has a guest spot in Agent Carter in uh, 2015. Oh, she was in... Workaholics. <laughs> I definitely would have seen that. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, four episodes of True Blood. I don't know if you watched that. No. Uh, uh. Um, Anna Wood played Monica. Um, she's uh, let's see, Ugh, not much. Uh, she mostly did TV. Um, a lot of Law and Orders <laughs> kind of things. Uh, yeah, this is kind <laughs> of her biggest film role. So, um. And then Bo Peterson is Karen Detmer. Uh, let's see. Oh, um, Andrew and uh, Anna Wood. Um, the Anna Wood, Monica, that's the pink-haired girl. She, oh, yeah. She's actually... Uh, they, the, Her and Andrew are actually real-life uh, a married couple. Oh. So, so Dane DeHaan and that chick? Dane DeHaan oh. and Anna Wood. <laughs> so, well, then uh, that's kind of funny. Since June thirtieth of twenty twelve, uh, the year this movie came out, so they got an anniversary coming up. Ten days. Ah, good for them. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Twenty twelve. Uh, wow, nine years. Good work. It makes it funnier to me, like that he has to puke on his wife. I'm sure that <laughs> <conversation> <laughs> was pain. Yeah. <laughs> Because uh, if you look behind um, behind the scenes features, sometimes Judge Ap- or Judd Apatow and Leslie Mann just are constantly arguing. <laughs> I'm not saying that. Come on, say it. I'm not. <laughs> uh, that's about it for Chronicle. There's not like a whole lot to this movie, honestly. Um, the, uh, Josh Trank had the idea, and he made it. Um, he this got him a lot of offers, apparently. Um, which he turned down a lot of them. Uh, of course, he did, he took the Fantastic Four, but um, <laughs> you know he. Let's see, he was uh, they they were gonna. He was originally offered Venom, um, and then after he was offered a Star Wars movie, which he originally uh, agreed on, but then after Fantastic Four, he <laughs> he stepped down from. <laughs> That's insane, though, to turn down a Star Wars movie. Yeah, see, I'm no, no. sure. I'm sure it's a pain in the ass to direct such a thing. I'm sure, but I mean, well, no, no, that's no, a, so, that's a club to get into. He he got. I don't think he stepped down. Yeah, think, no, no. Yeah. That's that's why I did the air quotes. He oh. after Fantastic Four, he stepped down. Word, I'm with you now. Yeah, it got yoinked. I, I thought you were just doing victory, <laughs> <laughs> like Nixon. <laughs> It's like when uh, cabinet members resign. Yeah. Resign. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. Um, to go be with their families. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to spend <laughs> more time fishing. I'm a, sons of I'm a, Yeah, I'm a 65-year-old man <laughs> with adult children who I haven't spoken to in a decade. I want to go spend more time with my family. Uh, um, this movie has uh, 85% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um. I have one one review. This is by Daniel P. And after last week, um, I'm thinking I'm only <laughs> going to choose Daniel reviews by people named Daniel from now on <laughs> to read. But Daniel P. <laughs> writes, and buckle up, guys. It's a journey. Hmm. On June 6th, 2021, this is just a few weeks ago. Not even a few. <laughs> like a, a week and a half ago. <laughs> Fresh review. Saw this in theaters, like over a decade ago, apparently, and I remember loving it, even though they marketed it as a horror film and it was 100% not anything remotely close to the horror genre, like at all. I'm sure thousands of other people have made this observation already, but here it goes. 
in hindsight, Chronicle ended up being one of the first films in the 21st century that was genuinely interested in exploring all of the adult mature themes that are rarely portrayed in a live action superhero movie. M. Night's 2000 sophomore film Unbreakable is and always has been perhaps the best live-action non-animated Superman movie ever made, which is a hell of a statement considering how many times other directors have made actual Superman movies with insanely large budgets and all kinds of worldwide studio marketing, etc., and yet none of the movies with Superman in them come close to being as great as Unbreakable. <laughs> And you know what? Chronicle might just be the w- one B to Unbreakable as one A. And then you have the 70s, 80s Superman movies somewhere around the letter Q or R. And way at the very bottom of everything else, you find the films of Zack Snyder's Superman, where all manner of subtext and any semblance of thematic meaning is dipped in sulfuric acid for three and a half hours on average, while a bunch of rich white men try to make the world bow down to their worst instinctual acts of grotesque machismo garbage behavior, while Amy Adams gets paid millions of dollars to stand around every movie for a few scenes and lifelessly read whatever tri- high school level dialogue has been drooled onto the page by a few detached incompetent screenwriters. Hey, Hollywood, maybe you should make more movies like Chronicle and Unbreakable, yeah? And not just invest billions of dollars every year for whatever franchise you feel like remaking since it's been almost five years since the last handful of films for any given IP were released. Could you hire people to write original stories again, or is that a thing that will no longer happen in the artistic medium of narrative filmmaking? Should I just stop watching new movies altogether? Because I've got more books I want to read than I'll ever be able to finish before I die. I could just read original stories written by people that actually want to tell stories that people haven't heard or seen before. That would be amazing. I think I'll just go ahead and do that since there's no sign of big studios wanting to take any sort of risks on aspiring filmmakers with original ideas. Hollywood, you can keep churching out your direct Netflix Zack Snyder trash movies and I'll be in my room reading one of the thousands of amazing literary hoarder titles on my to read list. Glad we talked this out. No, please leave me alone. Three and a half stars. <laughs> <laughs> Three and a oh, half after all that. Yeah, still the thought about uh, review. Okay, but what's his take on March of the Penguins? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, we need to do a welfare check on this guy. This feels like a <laughs> like his like last will and testament kind of. <laughs> Tirade. I would, and Jesus, what did Superman do to that guy? Right, and I would point yeah. out that this this is a a review written just a few weeks ago about a ten year old movie he hasn't seen since it opened. Yeah, that's wild. I also checked; he has like three other reviews. He only started recently, and this is the only one like this. For some reason, Chronicle I, set him off. What I love is that reading and TV are mutually exclusive. Like that's, all, yeah, you got to yeah. choose one. Yeah, you can yeah. only read or watch movies. You can't do both. <laughs> Not both. You cannot do both. Oh my lord. Um. So yeah, that was the first review that popped up when I <laughs> clicked all all reviews and i was like okay i don't need to go any further this says it all yeah, I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. so that is it um for our production and reviews on chronicle you guys ready to jump into this movie i'm not getting in that hole again <laughs> <laughs> i've said that too many times josh yeah, i yeah, wish i could yeah. i wish That's i could true. believe it and then the underlined word is again. Yeah. Here we go. This is Chronicle. We open on Andrew. He uh, doesn't want to let his drunk, abusive dad into his room. He's videotaping his entire life. This is a found footage movie, if we hadn't mentioned that up front for our listeners. Mm-hmm. Um, Even though there's an omniscient ca- uh, camera at times. Well, no, I mean... They make pains to really, really stretch the bounds of the conceit um, so that, I mean, technically the omniscient camera exists, Mizzen scene, but yeah, they're really pushing it. I think the, I feel like the end, the showdown with Andrew and the space needle. Oh, that'll explain that. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, no, there's cameras, there's cameras everywhere, every time. It's just, they really, really really push the bounds of like believability with it. Um, Copy that. Yeah. Found footage for sure. Um, 
So, all right, we uh, let's see. We meet a sick mother who is, I assume, cancer or something. She's got a breathing tube, um, but otherwise, she's just laying in bed. Uh, then he gets a ride to school with his cousin Matt. Um, at school, <laughs> he gets- who drops some Schopenhauer on him. Yeah. Well, he doesn't actually. He's just like, have you read it? No. <laughs> Well, think about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> didn't did, didn't Schopenhauer kill himself? Yeah, did he? I think so. I, I think so. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I assume most philosophers have, because if you spend that much time thinking about life, you're just going to get depressed. <laughs> uh, my favorite line from The Good Place is just Eleanor's like, "So who died <laughs> and made Plato?" Or, oh fuck! I fucked it. Oh up. yeah, 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 yeah. Who died and made him king? <laughs> Socrates. <laughs> That's who. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. Good, good place was a great show. If you guys haven't watched it, watched it. Um. All right. So uh, at school, he gets bullied. Not the least because he's carrying a camera around like a weirdo in 2011. Like. Yeah. And that's like a like a 1980s like Corey Haim sized camera. Yeah, giant light built in and yeah. everything. And, you know, he was bullied, and it was no joke. It was obvious bullying, but I've seen worse. Yeah. <laughs> Without I mean, people destroying a city. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was bullied in, um, off and on in school here and there, but um, yeah. I movie bullying is always funny. Um, at Jude and I have talked about that before, how, like, especially, like, 80s bullies, Mm-hmm. Um, they're never like, I'm going to push you down. They're always like, come here, geek. I'm going to put this knife in your intestines and murder you. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, you wear glasses. It's time for me to commit a, a capital <laughs> offense. Yeah. The time is now. Um, so, all right. Um, let's see. On, on the way home, Matt convinces Andrew to go to a party that night. We see a couple drug dealers on the corner in his neighborhood. Um, that night, his dad comes in and physically abuses him. Um, yeah. Uh, so Andrew goes to the party, and we meet Casey, a girl that my, Matt <clears throat> likes, who films everything for her blog. Yeah. But he's weird. Yeah. Because he doesn't have a blog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 2011. Everyone has a blog. But you know what I mean? People are weirded out by his camera. Yeah. Like, they obviously love Casey. Yeah, exactly. It, yeah, I don't know. Casey existed 100% just to have, so we could see Andrew's face finally. Yeah, I think so. Um, all right, so um, Andrew gets beat up for filming some dude's girlfriend. And again, this is, an, this is a weird period, because I guess it was right... <clears throat> Right before, or right as smartphones were coming, becoming a thing. Um, but also, like, every phone had a camera on it already. Mm-hmm. And there are people using their phones to film stuff all around here and there. Yet, like, at this large party, people are getting freaked out because this guy has a camera. Right. It was weird. Yeah, I guess it's because his rep is already that he's creepy. But, yeah, I agree. Yeah, well, and I mean, also like this. Okay, so like Josh Trank thought of this movie in high school, which was probably ten years prior. Mm-hmm. So you know, in you know, two thousand one, carrying a camera around would have been a lot creepier than it was in twenty eleven. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Um. So all right, the, let's see. Um. We meet Steve. He's the most popular boy in school. Uh, mm-hmm. He sweeps Andrew off his feet. Um, yeah. I was going to say, you can tell why. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it all. <laughs> um, Every girl's crazy about a sharp dress man. <laughs> He's a dreamboat. Um, Steve wants Andrew to uh, come film something that he and Matt found. <laughs> it's a hole in the ground. And <laughs> we I, found I'm a glad, hole. I'm glad it was all sincere. <laughs> Because you had that feeling of he's being lured into the woods to have the ship beat out of him. Especially when the guy's like, trust me, 
<laughs> yeah, no, my number one favorite thing about this was how wholesome and sincere Steve as a character was. Yeah, he was genuine. And yeah, I, he's the best part of the whole movie. Hands down. Like Steve, yeah. Steve, I was like, wow. <laughs> I, I, I love this guy. Um, yeah. So uh let's see. Um and they go <laughs> they they go to the hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. This movie is nothing but metaphors for teenage doom. Yeah. I want Obviously, you to Obviously he wrote it in the high school. Yeah. I want you There's to There's a confusing and mystical hole. I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> and it's making sounds. I, it's making sounds. I'd like to get into it, but it's weird. Well, yeah, and Steve goes right into the hole. <laughs> Whereas Andrew is kind of a, a little tentative about going into the hole. <laughs> <laughs> Why he's a virgin. Yeah. Um, so, all right. Uh, they, they're in a cave. They, they mentioned that it smells terrible. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. It shouldn't smell terrible. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> everybody, if it smells terrible, then you should probably see a doctor. <laughs> Steve's like... Uh, I dropped a dump last time I was down here. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I didn't want. I didn't want to climb back up. Jude and I have been rewatching Always Sunny. Um, oh gosh! And um, <laughs> the we, poop in the bed. That's the one we just watched this morning. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And Artemis on Father's Day morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and at the end, it's just like, why'd you do it, Frank? Poop's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's right yeah. it is funny dun, 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 dun. uh so all right um so they uh go in the cave and in the cave they find a weird glowing meteor thing that gives them nosebleeds and breaks the camera it looks kind of kryptonian it does yeah very i i think that's had to be purposeful sure yeah um uh is it uh, it's glowing blue and then it glows red. Yeah, um, and it has like l- weird, like um, like a uh, oily moving liquid inside it, kind of like X Files first movie, like liquid stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. the roots around it were all moving too. Yeah, doing this little wiggle. Yeah, super roots. <laughs> <laughs> the roots could fly or use telekinesis. <laughs> Yeah, it's the real band, The Roots, but they're just enhanced uh, <laughs> Super superpowers. <laughs> I was thinking actual, I was thinking like yams and carrots, but okay. Um, <laughs> it takes all kind to make a world. So, all right. Uh, we cut to them testing out newfound powers. Uh, Matt and Steve got Andrew a new camera since his old one's broken. Um, by giving each other head injuries with the baseball. I would not think <laughs> it was funny if my <laughs> friend's threw a baseball at my face as hard as they could. <laughs> I, I don't understand why they didn't start with a tennis ball. Yeah. Yeah. But again, <clears throat> it's yeah. Teenagers. That's, that's as good as teenagers can come up with. Yeah. I mean, kind of shit. I but guess, yeah. I guess that's fair. I can 100% actually see a certain kind of teenager being like, yeah, just throw the ball at my face as hard as you can. <laughs> and I know I always do this, but it, it reminds me on 30 rock where, it's a flashback when James Marsden tried to get on America's Funniest Home Videos. It's just him and his brother just destroying his nuts in every way they can. <laughs> so, um, all right. So Andrew's the first one that's able to stop the ball with his mind. Um, they mind test balls. <laughs> mind balls. <laughs> mind songs, mind balls. Every movie's got a mind to something. <laughs> um, later, they test their powers out on Legos. Matt knocks <laughs> over his Lego tower like, dude, yeah. that is not cool. That's that's when the movie became Bionicle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, clearly Andrew is from the get-go the most powerful of them. They head back to the cave to check the thing out again. <laughs> but the hole has been caved in and there are police everywhere. <laughs> so... <laughs> Sorry, boys, you can't get in this hole. <laughs> Your whole days are over. <laughs> You're a surface dweller now. <laughs> no more mole men for you. <laughs> uh, so um, that night driving around, um, Steve and Andrew Bond, we learned that Andrew's dad used to be a firefighter who got injured on the job and is now unemployed on disability. Um, back at home, 
Um, Andrew learns to float his camera around, and uh, we hear in the background that uh, their family is having trouble affording his mom's medication. Mm-hmm. Then we find out that Michael B. Jordan has never heard the word telekinesis before. <laughs> That's all right. This is the first of several things in this. Um, and this reminded me of Green Lantern. And it's just, it's the trope where in a movie they describe like basic like third grade level <laughs> like science stuff to mm-hmm. the movie like they've never heard it before. Yep. Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, let's see. They have some fun. They figure out their powers. They... <laughs> sexually harass a few girls, um, assault some people in a store, move a parked car. All fun and games. But then they're being harassed by a road rager. Um, Andrew accidentally uses his powers to send the car off the road, uh, careening into a river. Uh, I don't think it was an accident, though. I, th- I think that is left to our interpretation. It yeah, is. Because, um, right before the um, car hits the guardrail, the front end of the car is smashed in. You know what I mean? And yeah. so that may have been what he was trying to do, but what the force of that drove it off the road. Yeah. So I'm, I'm accident on... purpose at the same time. Yeah, I mean, and he... he did the whole like push with his hand thing. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't know if he meant to actually run it off the road or just meant for it to like crash into the guardrail and stop. Like that's, that's hard. What I would think that's real hard to say. Knowing did he did he accidentally cause it to start pouring rain? <laughs> yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a Jurassic Park scene. Because <laughs> when the when the truck Wait, goes what? off goes through the guardrail, it's like there's no rain anywhere, and then in the river, right. it's just pouring. pouring on top of them. Yeah, it is around Seattle though. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, all right. Uh, Steve jumps in and pulls the man inside out. Um, they just pulls him inside out. Yeah. (laughs) So I heard that too. too. He pulls the man that is in the car out of the car. Um, I thought this was interesting considering that it was like, they specifically mentioned it's like some redneck and like, so like, you know, um, the black kid's the one that pulls him out. He's, he's, I mean, he's clearly the hero. He's clearly the, the Clark Kent of the group. Um, Yeah. He jumps into the water and like risks his body, Mm -hmm. even though he has telekinesis powers. Yeah. 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 Um, so, all right. Uh, later on, they decide to make some rules about their powers. I mean, Matt says, we should make rules. They don't decide as a yeah, group. Yeah. He just starts dictating what the right. rules are. Yeah, exactly. Because he's kind of in between. You know, he's meant to yeah. be, but yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Matt Matt is kind of the audience surrogate in some ways. Um Yeah, it's a good way to put it. Um, but yeah, he's the reasonable one. Steve is the Clark Kent, and then Andrew obviously is the one who was gonna take it too far. We knew that from frame one, but um right. uh yeah. Um the rules so are to, oh go ahead. Yeah, don't feed them after midnight. Uh, <laughs> sorry, this is the wrong rules. Um, <laughs> you have the rules, yeah. Al? Go ahead. <laughs> um, no using on living things. Uh, no using while angry. There are a lot of things mm. you shouldn't do when you're angry. Don't drive angry. <laughs> yeah, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of things you shouldn't use while angry either. <laughs> Cocaine, uh, guns. <laughs> all the um, fun shit. No using in public. Again, I think these are all just rules for cocaine now that I'm reading them. Uh, <laughs> for the guy who didn't chip in wants to share your powers. Right. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah. Then they, Andrew reluctantly agrees to the rules. Um, then the next day, they go out to the middle of nowhere. Steve, off camera, has learned to fly. They all practice. Then they go way up into the sky to fly around the clouds and play football. They do. They do acknowledge that it's pretty cold up there. Put on some coats. Um, they almost get hit by a passing jet, which kind yeah. of uh, makes them fall to the ground. Andrew saves Steve's life, grabs him, and uh, they're able to land safely <laughs> and the camera. Um, then that night at Steve's house, they 
talk about girls. Andrew admits he's a virgin. They have a sleepover, and they all agree that it's been the best day of their lives. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to live forever, guys. <laughs> we're, we're BFFs. Yeah. Um, and they peak at this point. Yeah. <laughs> they, will, they will not have a better day. Yes, they do. This, That's true. <laughs> yeah. Everything from here like is the come down. Yes. Yeah, right. Uh, um, right. The next day in school, they talk about using their powers to fly around the world. Uh, Steve wants to go to Maui. Andrew wants to visit Tibet. You <laughs> know, if you go in the right direction, you could do one on the way to the other. <laughs> yeah. Would I mean, is there a long way around? I guess I don't know how far Tibet is really. Well, I guess right if you start, say you were in Cal, they're in Seattle. If they went east, it would take a while, but. Yeah, Never I mind. guess they're, they're not even in a machine. They're flying. <laughs> you go to go to Maui first and right. then go to Tibet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I'm pretty sure Andrew does later. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I think he stopped by Maui on the way. That that flight to Maui, you gotta have a GPS or some shit, because <laughs> well, in the middle of that's nowhere. That's what I was wondering. How hard would it be to figure out where the hell you are if you're just in the sky flying around on your own? They're like, is that Bakersfield or was I going west? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'd need a GPS of some sort. <laughs> it's like, right. it's all like, um, or, hey Google, how do I get to Tibet? Or just <laughs> land and stop at a gas station and ask where you are. <laughs> ask for direct. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I don't like, can you point me to Tibet? Well, the first thing as a crow flies, yeah. <laughs> He's like, like, well, the first thing you want to do is head on down to Austin. <laughs> Siri, find me Tibet. Um, so all right, um, Matt that night, um, or later that day, I don't know when he does it. He stops at Casey's house to try and impress her with his wokeness. Luckily, she's decided to film it for us. <laughs> um, it does not go great. Um, although but she it is, doesn't go terrible. It doesn't go right. terrible. She's charmed. She's charmed by his his uh, enthusiastic awkwardness. Um, so meanwhile, Steve and Andrew spend some time together at the top of a building. Andrew tells Steve he's lonely and unpopular. <laughs> Steve tells him he's not. <laughs> And convinces Andrew to do the upcoming school talent show with him. Then uh, at home, Andrew's dad is suspicious of uh, Andrew's recent secretiveness. The uh, Then we get to the talent show. Andrew he's specifically and uh, suspicious about how he's getting to school. Yeah. Because he Matt hasn't been coming to pick him. Or Andrew hasn't been coming. Wait, Matt, Matt hasn't been coming coming to, to pick, pick him, him up. up. <laughs> I don't know why he didn't just say, I've been walking. I mean, maybe it's too far to walk. Uh, sure. Maybe mm -hmm. you could say, Matt has been picking me up down at the corner because I'm embarrassed of my drunk alcoholic, of my <laughs> alcoholic abusive father. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a bad line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, let's see. Uh, would they get the talent show? Andrew and Steve do a comedy magic routine. <laughs> they're illusions America, michael america's got talent yeah um it brings down the house and then at a big party afterwards andrew is the man of the hour drinking playing beer pong making out with a pink-haired girl who later on <laughs> will become the, his wife no one gets laid like magicians who are good at beer pong. That's true. Uh, <laughs> Those just make panties wet no matter where. Jude was asking me about beer pong. He's like, so the point of the game is to win and then not be able to drink you the beer which you, <laughs> you want to drink. I was like, well, yeah. But, yeah. but also. You're, yeah. you're also drinking throughout, so yeah. getting drunk as a result of losing is kind of a side quest. Like, oh, <laughs> God, I got so drunk because I lost. <laughs> by, the, uh, by the time you're in the middle of a beer pong game, mm, actually making the shot is is more pure luck than anything else because you, you're already several deep at that point. <laughs> I want to go to a party and set up beer pong and everyone that gets it in the cup gets a little beta fish in a tiny <laughs> bowl. <laughs> <laughs> you won! You won! 
everybody's going to drink that fish. Oh, Everybody. no. Um, so, all right. So, <laughs> Andrew and pink haired girl head up to the bedroom alone together. Matt and uh, I just love Steve so much. <laughs> like, he is just so, like, it's my boy. Yeah. Uh, uh, Matt and Casey spend some alone time together, but not everything is good. Andrew has had too much to drink and he pukes all over the girl. It, it wasn't until the second time watching that I realized with the way the puke was and the way he was sitting, she was on her knees in front of him when he yeah, puked Yeah, because his pants were down. Yeah, she was, it wasn't just like they were having sex. She was in the middle, she like got a full back head of puke. Like, <laughs> and then his dick vomited. <laughs> that's like, like, have you guys seen mall rats? That's like, like, <laughs> like that level. <laughs> um. So, all right. Um. Well, and they did it in super bad, but it was the female character. Yeah. Yeah. Who puked on Michael Sarah. Yeah. All right. But yeah. 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 She's like that fucking magician puked on. <laughs> but yeah, she <laughs> He's dead to me. Yeah, she comes out, she's so disgusted. Like he drank a lot and puked on me, and now I hate him. <laughs> I hate him. He kept, he kept pulling playing cards out of my vagina. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought so like the first time when she was coming out. I really thought there was like something weird and creepy with his powers going on. I didn't realize it was just your average teenager drank too much and puked on her. Like could happen to anybody. Yeah. Um, Steve rightly is like, Hey bro, you drank too much and you puked. It's good. Don't worry about it. But Andrew is a total like bummer aggro kid about it. Um, He's a real loser. Andrew's dude. Andrew just, like I, I know he's got a lot going on at home, but man, like, let's bring it down a notch in the social situations. You, you wouldn't be an incel if you just stopped puking on girls. <laughs> I feel like you wouldn't be an incel if, when you puked on a girl, you didn't like scream at everybody and rage quit home. That's <laughs> yeah. the that's the thing. It's the rage quitting, not the puking on the girl. <laughs> Agreed. Um. Because I guarantee maybe Steve's puked on a girl, but it was just like, oh, shit. Sorry, baby. <laughs> Let's clean you up. I, I don't think Steve's <laughs> puked on a girl. <laughs> Tell us more about this construct. What's going on? Not unless you wanted him to. I'm sure yeah. he'd be willing. He's he's good to go. Um, he's so a giver. He is. He doesn't <laughs> kink shame. Um, so, all right. Uh, at home, Andrew starts killing arachnids. Then his uh, dad discovers his camera. He deconstructs it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, subtle metaphor. Cruel. Yeah, cruel. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. You know, it's generally the first step, the pulling the wings off of flies kind of thing. I guarantee if this was PG-13 instead of, or if this was R instead of PG-13, they would have been like a cat or something. Like that's that's the vibe they were going for. But those are the steps that put you in the direction to psychopathy and sociopathy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Total lack of empathy from Andrew. Um, so, uh, let's see. Yeah. Cause I mean, there's, here's the thing there's plenty of people who have trauma in their childhood homes who don't end up murdering people. You, right. <laughs> like, like that's not really an excuse. You yeah. can, no. Um, so, all right. you know, if anything, it's an attempt at understanding, but yeah, never, never an excuse. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Understanding. Definitely. Um, so let's see. Andrew, um, is confronted by his father. Um, while his, mo- <laughs> his mother is like screaming and Andrew is like, dad, dad, where are you? She needs her medicine. And he's just like walking around Andrew's room. Yeah. Like his dad is Jesus Christ. Finds his camera. Yeah, finds his camera. <laughs> um, finds his camera and he chastises him for all the loser stuff they were he's like that he right. watched. Yeah. That that he filmed. And chastises him for the, the cost of the camera. But he didn't dad actually didn't get to the footage of them doing superpowers. No, so, right. He only the only footage he watched was him puking on the girl. That's like, it was like, ah, oh, you loser. It's like, no, Where there's cool did? stuff too. There's cool stuff too, dad. <laughs> um, so, all right. Um, they argue. He calls his dad an idiot. So his dad attacks him. Andrew uses his powers to defend himself. 
um, and fight him off. Uh, then we learn that the three guys have some sort of psychic link. When Andrew gets too emotional, they like hear a ringing and like, um, they get nosebleeds and they like telekinetically know or telepathically know something's going on. Uh, And they can like locate each other through that. Yeah. Yeah. It seemed that way. Yes. Yeah. Um, so Andrew flies up into a storm cloud to sulk for a while. Steve flies up to find him. Steve is just being totally emotionally available, but while Andrew's a <laughs> dickhead and wants yeah. to be alone and starts bad mouthing him. And then Steve gets hit by lightning. Um, hard cut to the funeral for Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Matt confronts Andrew about Steve's death. Andrew lies and says he doesn't know what happened or how Steve ended up dying by lightning. So I, I don't <laughs> only if I don't ways. necessarily think that lightning works like that. That's just yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Like so I mean like so you mean like being in the air? Yeah. Hmm. Ha, um That's Al. just a nitpick on my on my part there. Al, do you have science knowledge of how Lightning would like Ugh. if a lightning hit, would lightning, would it? I mean, I can't be good even if it's passing through you. Like, if, <laughs> well, it can't be good. Oh, yeah. Me. I mean, uh, the reason why lightning hits people on the ground is because the lightning is an interaction with the, the surf, the ground. Yeah. 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 Right. It's, yeah. It finds the fastest way to the ground. Yeah. Like, like it, it doesn't just hit stuff that's flying around in the air necessarily. I, I think the idea was that. Andrew caused the lightning to hit him. Oh. Or yeah. I just figured he was in the path of a bolt of lightning. Yeah. Well, I, when when Andrew's crying at Steve's grave, he says how he lost control. So, so I mm. do think I do think he caused that that lightning. Mm. So okay. magic so lightning Steve. maybe does act that way. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that uh, Kryptonian <laughs> crystal lightning. Yeah. Um <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Great a street drink. drug. But yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't think I think yeah, absolutely you're right though. Obviously, like no like scientifically, if if it was just uh lightning happened to go off, then it probably would not have hit Steve. Well, it hits planes. Hmm. Anyway. I don't know enough about lightning science to have an opinion on any <laughs> yeah. of this. So I'm just it's taking None of my first. business. Yeah. You didn't take a semester of lightning science in Cleveland College. <laughs> just lightning. I majored in lightning science. <laughs> lightning one of one. Be like, do you want to learn about thunder science too? No. Just what? lightning. Be like, they're pretty intrinsically entwined. No. I said no, lightning. I um they're essentially the same thing. No. Um, Surprising that you can't get a degree in lightning science now that I think about that, actually. (laughs) Because when it's time to do your final project, you die. (laughs) You're out in the field. (laughs) That's got to be a a branch of meteorology. Anyways. Oh, yeah. I'm sure there's definitely specialists somewhere out there. And if any of you are listening, please email or (laughs) or message us on Twitter. We'd love to know. Send a raven. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> on how lightning works. Um, so, according to simpleflying.com, uh, planes all <laughs> over the world get struck by lightning almost daily. Um, do to do, do, however, the. F- uh, do, 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 do. Um, but it's not normal for a plane to get struck by lightning and fall out of the sky. Right. Gotcha. It passes harmlessly through the plane. Um. Does it say how Michael B. Jordan reacts to yeah. lightning? <laughs> that out? Do, do, do Michael B. Jordans <laughs> get struck by lightning daily? Fly? Daily. It's like, uh, it's a real so, bummer. There's another one in the with garden, a, mom. <laughs> with a with a plane which is normally made of aluminum, uh, the lightning will usually pass around the outside of the container, acting the fuselage acting like a Faraday cage. Hmm. Um, so, Steve was not encased in aluminum. <laughs> <laughs> I'll concede that. Okay, so... Um, All right. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew tells 
uh, Matt that he doesn't know anything about Steve's death, which is a big lie. Um, then at school, Andrew pulls the teeth out of his bully's face, which is rough. Fucking sweet use of that power, man. Ooh, right? Jesus. And he keeps trophies. I know he flushes them, but, you know, well, he has these trophies and shows them off to his video camera uh, or video he, diary. He, he, was, he discusses like his a, technique. Yeah. yeah, he's doing like a post-mortem on, on the, the technique that he used. Yeah. Right. And he was really holding a grudge because that dude didn't bully him since the first five minutes of the movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, he bullies him. Doesn't, it, doesn't he just bully him previous to him uh, yanking his teeth out? He oh. makes fun of him for uh, puking on Monica. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. Okay. So he like pursues him and then yanks gotcha. his incisors. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Again, that has nothing to do with the powers. Like just puking on a girl and then getting made fun of in school is just a thing that would happen to teenagers. That would happen. That's yeah. Yeah. that's like, dude. That's not. That has nothing to do with your trauma. You're just just get through it. We've all dealt with that shit. Right. It's just it's just yeah. growing up, man. It's yeah. Just a story. Um. So all right. Uh. Andrew at this point goes full libertarian, talking about lions and. <laughs> squishing full, bugs. like uh who's the lobster guy clean your room uh, i don't know <laughs> what's that guy's name lobster Speaking of libertarians uh, no he's Sh- like a Sh- pop philosopher charlie oh. kirk shapiro i don't know zizek zizek or like actual libertarians he's a libertarian pop philosopher god what is his name he says he tells teenage boys to clean their room um, I don't know. I mean, cleaning your I'm room is good up. advice, no matter what your political ideology. <laughs> um. So, uh, yeah, I Jordan Peterson. Oh, Ooh. that oh, dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't know he told people to clean their room. <laughs> yeah, it's good advice, I mean, especially for teenage boys. Yeah, like really, teenage. But, yeah, he. He, he likens sexuality to the life cycle of lobsters in a weird way. And he got what? grilled on the internet for it because so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, human right. beings are not uh, lobsters. <laughs> right, I am yeah. not a lobster. I don't even have to hear his argument. I am not a lobster. Yeah. I am a man. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, all right. So um, at that point, Matt uh, comes to visit Andrew. Uh, he tries to physically subdue him. But Andrew is stronger than he is. Um, Andrew goes to pick up his mom's medication, but it's too expensive. This is yet another example of America's healthcare system creating supervillains. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking- well, yeah, I have questions about this moment. Yes. Why not just steal the fucking medicine? Why not just like walk to the right. front of the store and be like, I saw the bottle. I'm going to yoink it across this Walgreens and then I'm going to walk out with it. Mm-hmm. Well, he, he said that's a challenge he, and less complicated than what he tries to do. Yeah, they steal them. Well, they said it had to be next day delivered. So I think it wasn't actually in the pharmacy. Mm. OK, yeah, okay. they did say that. Um, but what is the medicine even like? I mean, I imagine it's painkillers at this point because she's or she's chemo pre- sugar pills. But I mean, chemo like is it? I, yeah, I don't know. It could they're, be Zima. I don't know if you guys have seen that Archer episode. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're real vague about what his mom's actual sickness is. We assume like some sort of cancer, but we don't really know. But it could be emphysema. Yeah. Yeah. It could, mm-hmm. Yeah, it could She's be any num- oxygen. Yeah, it could be any number mm-hmm. of things. We, we don't know. It's, it's just <laughs> vague, vague, vaguely like dying. <laughs> She's dying Bear attack. and she needs her medication. <laughs> That's all we know. Um, so, all right. Uh, Same. Yeah, 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 we're all dying and we all need our medication. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, ain't cheap, that's for sure. Yeah. That's for sure. Um, so, all right. So, Andrew decides to break out his dad's old firefighting gear and rob some drug dealers. They don't, strangely enough, they don't have a ton of money. These random, like, dudes standing on the street corner in in what seems like like a lower middle class neighborhood. They're not, like, in the hood. 
Yeah, they're just the local toughs. Yeah. Uh, another movie trope where like neighborhoods just have local toughs who just stand on the corner all the time. <laughs> Maybe don't go that way next time. Right. <laughs> That's the only way to get to your house. Um, so, all right. He doesn't have enough. He doesn't get enough money from them. So he robs a gas station. However, the clerk has a gun and he tries to shoot Andrew, who uh, deflects it, causing a propane explosion, which uh, Andrew lights on fire and ends up in the hospital. Um, his hair, though, is OK. Yes. <laughs> um, his floppy hair. Uh, he's unconscious. His dad comes to visit him. <laughs> <laughs> To, to punk him even more. Right? He's just crying. And I yeah. thought I thought we were finally seeing some emotion from his dad. And then he's just like, <laughs> your mother's dead. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, sir. Ber- berating hours are over. Yeah. I, he's screaming at his unconscious son. I want you to apologize to me. <laughs> For your mother's terminal illness that finally came to its inevitable end. Yeah. Um. So... Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, the cartoonish levels of the father. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, so th- this <laughs> moment made me reflect on many other moments in this movie. We are oftentimes in Andrew's room, right? Watching him from his floating camera, which isn't mm-hmm. creepy at all. Mm-hmm. And in the background, there are two voices disagreeing constantly. Right. Is he psychologically abusing his uh, sick wife throughout the movie that we just don't see it on camera? You know, like we can hear yeah, it vaguely right. in the background. Well, maybe it's the neighbors fighting, but I doubt it. Well, I think there is some of that, but uh, um, with subtitles on the second time through, I could hear that he was yelling at insurance companies on the phone a couple yeah. times. Ah, yeah. The dad was. Um, but I will that ad- makes sense. I will admit, I also even thought that he was trying to get them so frantically because he was taking her pain medication. Oh. But, but that never was validated. Mm. Initially, that's what I thought. Huh. That's definitely right. a good 2020 interpretation. Well, of I mean, what's yeah. happening in this movie. Well, can because, feel it right now? Be, well, because he it. does scream about how she's in pain. And so, yeah. like, it leads you to believe it is pain medication. And so, I mean, chances are that's just going to be an opiate, which – is expensive, but not seven hundred and fifty dollar copay expensive, and it's definitely something the pharmacy would have in stock. Yeah. I have one. I have a medication that's four hundred. If if uh, the insurance doesn't pick up a copay, yeesh. I mean, I'm not. Yeah. I mean, I know. I, I'm not saying like the, everything's not fucked, but like, no, no, I know. But simp- you know, like you're, you know, you're, your your simple, uh, you know, opiate. Probably right. isn't going to run you a seven fifty copay. That's true, but that's also I thought maybe it was like chemo medication as well. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, again, that wouldn't like because he's screaming about how she's in pain and needs her medication for the pain. So, yeah, no, for sure, I heard him say that. Yeah, but it, it just made me think that it was another nefarious thing he was up to. Yeah, but. no, no, that would that makes that would make a lot of sense. Um, so he does love his wife unconditionally. He does just doesn't he? love his son unconditionally. I don't know that he does because a lot because while his wife is in pain and Andrew's screaming at him to come help, the dad's walking around the room like, yeah, he's, yeah, he's resentful of both of them, like incredibly. And I know Captain Obvious, but you know he resents his wife for having to take care of her. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I feel like. I feel like they, like the dad situation was while trying to be like, like complex and, and realistic also was just so half sketched that it like came I, off as I cartoonish. think it was intentional to like, see, cause it is found footage kind of thing. Yeah. And Andrew was avoiding that part of his life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, while yeah. it overwhelms him. Well, yeah, and he's he's purposefully vague about it when he's telling his telling Steve about it. So, yeah. Um. All right. So, uh, Andrew, in his unconscious state, does not take his dad's <laughs> demands for an apology. Well, he blows out the wall of the hospital, 
Meanwhile, at a child's birthday party, Matt gets a nosebleed and realizes there's something wrong with Andrew. Um, I know it's um, at, at this point, Casey's calling Matt. Um, Matt, uh, she called him like honey or something babe. like that. Babe. Yeah. Babe. yeah, yeah so yeah. they're They've definitely back together. They're definitely dating at this point. Yeah. Um, Matt and Casey rush to the hospital to find it surrounded by cops and firefighters. They see Andrew fly up out of his room holding his dad. He drops his dad, but Matt flies up and saves him. So I, I don't understand how, uh, what's his name? And not, not Andrew, Matt, how mm-hmm. Matt did not arrive at the hospital to see his cousin. Who oh, was gravely injured. Yeah. He's at a birthday party after his <laughs> aunt just died the night before he's, his cousin has been missing overnight. Mm-hmm. His father has been looking for him. That's a good point. I have a feeling that Matt got a phone call at some point. Like, yeah, have you seen Andrew? You drive this boy around a lot. Like, yeah, no, a, I'm too busy. A magic with my girlfriend, we got a birthday party. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, um, I can't do that because the last time I saw Andrew, he used his magic powers to stop me from hitting him. <laughs> yeah, like I, I don't know, I don't understand this character as as much in this moment. Yeah, yeah, um. Because I know if one of my cousins got hurt, even if I hadn't talked to him in weeks or months or years, I'd probably be there being like, God damn it. Mm. Well, yeah. On the cousin, but, and this know. is, this is a cousin who he hangs out with all the time and is known yeah. to hang out with all the time. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So Andrew flies away. Um, Matt and Casey follow him in her car. I'll circle back around to that later. Um, Andrew picks the car up. Drops it uh, from the top of the space needle. Uh, Matt saves Casey from the crashing car, takes her to safety and confronts Andrew. Andrew is pissed that Matt saved his dad. Um, they fight all over the city. The people in all the buildings are filming them with their phones and iPads. <laughs> and <laughs> Andrew pulls all of the phones and iPads out around him. He's 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 got a he's got a classic supervillain drama thing going on. Like, look at yes. me, mere mortals. You're <laughs> superior. <laughs> that, I'm gonna trade all these in at that machine at Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how we get the many angled scene here that Yeah. That uh, that doesn't good. look doesn't immediately look like it's found footage. That but, uh, all, that makes sense. Phones are filming like they're like filming these people flying outside, and he like grabs their phones mm-hmm. and tablets and such, and to then, film himself. Yeah, and well, and then I think he keeps them with him because at the end when they're okay, well, <laughs> all right. So um, they fight through the city. They crash through buildings. They cause a lot of damage. Andrew takes out some cops. Um, eventually, they find themselves surrounded by cops next to some government building with a statue of a Native American with a spear, which I'm sure is probably an actual building in Seattle, which I did not Google. Um, Way back earlier, uh, and, uh, Matt got hit by a bus. Mm. Andrew, Andrew threw a bus at him. Yep, the classic bus. Um, how many superhero movies have we watched where somebody throws a bus at somebody now? It's got to be in the double digits at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, well... And this this moment where he whispers, I'm an apex predator. <laughs> and Matt goes, what did you say? He says, and I, then gets hit by a bus. I'm an apex predator. That's a power move. He yeah, why whisper? What? I guess he, I'm he whispered. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, why was the direction to whisper that and not be like, I'm an apex predator and hit him with a bus? Right. <laughs> It's such a weird choice. It really like, is. Sorry. Hey, cuz, what what did you say? I couldn't I couldn't hear you. He's craning in to listen and then gets hit by a bus. Not like, whoa, that was nuts. Oh, bus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm an apex predator. What was that? Uh, I said, I'm feeling fine today. How are you? <laughs> right? <laughs> like it doesn't make the any shark sense. In a trench coat. Yeah. At all. Um, so, uh. so at this point, um, it looks like Andrew's just going to kill a bunch of cops. And Matt uses the spear from the statue to impale Andrew 
uh, sticking him to the ground, killing him. Um, Matt flies away. So earlier, um, we had Matt deflecting a fork that Andrew was trying to stab into his hand. Um, mm-hmm. Was he able to bend the fork because he was paying attention? And in this moment, Andrew gets impaled because he wasn't. He didn't see. He it. didn't see it coming. He yeah. He was focused on other things. Er- earlier, they specifically say if you concentrate, you can't be hurt. Okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's they do still have to focus on that. Um. So we cut to Matt flying around the world. He stops by <laughs> a green screen to bet. <laughs> that looked real like local weatherman level green screen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, says goodbye to Andrew. He promises to help people get answers on what happened to them in the cave. And then we roll credits. He leaves the camera in Tibet. Yes. Yeah. So is that where this found footage was found? Wow. Was... Well, Tibet. Yeah. Did he like edit the entire movie together onto this camera? Cause there were multiple cameras that created the film itself. Right. And then leave it in the Tibetan. Well, it, it didn't come together in a way that made sense. It's like, Oh, that's why we watched this whole movie. If he had like walked up, taken the cassette out and mailed it to, uh, what was her name? Casey, Casey. Cassandra. Yeah. 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 Like, Put this shit on your blog. Yeah. It, it <laughs> well, they had to, they had to collect all the, the, phone footage from all those people and all uh, those random people. there was um like street Austin. camera street street camera footage uh and the camera at the gas too. station well and they had the buddhist monk it department to help them yeah, <laughs> yeah i the the, con, the found footage conceit the, like i said they played really fast and loose with it and it didn't hold together all the time yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it didn't culminate in a way that made sense. No, because like as like the most famous example, Blair Witch um, is put together as in like we found this footage. Here is the documentary you are watching. Like the conceit is the entire film. Right. Yeah. It's not just like everything was shot with found footage and it's a movie. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Um, <laughs> Unanswered questions. I mean, I feel like this movie was like real straightforward and simple, so I don't actually have a ton. Um, but uh, one of them was, why the hell did they take Casey's car to the hospital? Why didn't Matt fly his ass there and then fly his ass after Andrew instead of chasing him that's in Casey's car? We needed another camera. And that's the real answer. Yeah. Contrived. Um, no using in public until... Matt until Andrew's dad is falling out of the hospital. Yeah, then he saves his dad. Then it's okay. At that point, all bets are off. So, yeah. like, just just go after him. Yeah, and it's one of yeah, your. Pres- I, those rules aren't thought through at all. No, you don't use them in public. What if someone is falling out of a burning building? Like, yeah, okay, then yeah, yeah go ahead. then <laughs> use them in public. Is there yeah. like a loophole there? Because yes, those rules fall apart real quick. Yeah, they do. Um, <laughs> um, I. How long ago was that? What time is it? Uh, 15 minutes ago, Andrea, she uh, comments that she got to say this movie sounds like it's just the craft for dudes. She's actually, (laughs) actually, yeah. (laughs) Not far off. Wow. It really is. It really is. I thought that, I thought that movie was about mac and cheese. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's craft with a C. Not a, Okay. Oh. The craft. I want to make. Word. I want to make a parody now of the craft. The craft <laughs> with a K. <laughs> it's like light as a feather, um, stiff as Gouda. <laughs> light as mozzarella, stiff as Gouda. All right. Uh, That's ranker. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I have. I have well, an unanswered question. Yeah, I have I another have... one too. Go ahead, Al. Um, what did Young say about glow sticks? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Al, do you have an answer? I don't. No, that is unanswered. Um, Yeah. Um, It would be perception related. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, the collective unconscious rave (laughs) (laughs) that we all exist in. 
<laughs> um, the totems. Yeah. This is less an unanswered question. It's just kind of like, a, what's up with this? Um, <laughs> how the police that? just kept spawning like GTA 5 style next to wherever they were at the end. Yeah. Like they were in one like location and the cops just rolled up on them and they flew to a place across town and dropped down and the cops just rolled up on them immediately again. Well, same thing with the helicopters. The helicopters would just appear like he blew up a helicopter. So two more helicopters show up. It's, it is very GTA. Yeah, the cops yeah. were just spawning next to them. <laughs> yeah. yeah and, I mean, it is Seattle. There are a ton of cops to protect. Yeah, we, we found them. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, that's it. Um, anything else, guys, then, before we rank it? Uh, this has some of the coolest flying in any movie that we've seen. I think the, the exploration of cool. how you would fly um, using telekinesis as a flying ability it has always been a thing that drove me nuts about Xavier mm. and or not Xavier right. about like Jean Grey and people yeah. like that where I'm like, if you can move objects, move yourself, pick yeah. yourself up and fly around. And I remember I saw this maybe five or six years ago, um, long after it had come out. And I remember seeing that and being like, fuck, somebody did this in a movie. That's so neat. And then of course it, you know, the movie continues <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, i thought but, it was plenty entertaining it, it yeah. was fine it was a solid c plus in my book like 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 it, the movie itself was fine i do agree the flying stuff was pretty cool yeah i also so a bunch of teenagers flying they didn't fly anywhere interesting at all yeah. no do you think that three boys would be like let's fly to the beach Let's fly to the ocean and fly low over the ocean. <laughs> let's yeah. Let's get into Disneyland for free. Yeah. Let's like, go to Vegas, like something. They, yeah, they, they might just, have gotten there eventually. If, yeah, if they had not. Well, I mean, yeah, crazy. they talked about it, but but he yeah. was like, I'm thinking of flying to Maui for the weekend, <laughs> and then like bummer, dude, he's like, no, Tibet, because I'm very serious about. <laughs> no, it. we got to stick around for this talent show. <laughs> the talent, right? <laughs> the like, oh, do you have yeah, a place just, to stay in Maui? No, I'm just gonna hover. Yeah. At this point, I would have dropped out of high school and flown around the world. I, you, As there would have been no stopping me. You know, yeah. I'm like, well, I'd be yeah. puking yeah. on bitches from coast to coast. Well, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, Steve. Steve also had an election coming up. He was running for uh, <laughs> for a student body wait. government president. Yeah, that's how we're introduced to him, and he does not give a wait. shit about it. Well, yeah, no, no, but was, then was he a senior? Yeah, or was he a junior? He's a senior. They are all seniors. They all they mentioned specifically it was their senior year, but then winter break was coming up, and they still hadn't elected him president. Right. <laughs> Maybe it was a series but, of recounts. Yeah, there was you, an audit. You run for president when you're a junior. Yeah. Right. And then you're the president the next year when you're the senior. Yeah, no, but they specifically say they're bullshit. seniors. They say it's your senior year, man. Like it they're they're specific about it. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Eh. Maybe Yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. Anyway. Yeah, no, that's that's a good point, Al. That completely unrealistic movie ruined. C minus. C <laughs> You lost your plus, Chronicle. Oh, oh, my last, my last unanswered question I almost forgot about. Why is it called Chronicle? Because he's chronicling everything on his uh, camera. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. yeah, why wasn't it like Camera Boy or something? <laughs> <laughs> the like, misadventures of... <laughs> the misadventures of Camera Boy and it's... Oh, something Jude pointed out, which I didn't like, uh, which I didn't think of. was like, um, when Michael B. Jordan died, I was like, oh, that's sad. And Jude was like, I saw that coming from the beginning. And I was like, how? He's like, it's the black guy. I was like, oh, yeah. yep. man, you're yep. right. Always got to Yeah, because be. if they had killed Matt, no one would have given a shit. <laughs> yes, exactly. You're like, oh, that doofus died? Well. <laughs> He's like, I was running for treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares. So, all right, you're ready to rank it, guys? Yes. Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, our rankings. So, um... I feel like this is kind of the area to start with. If you guys agree, we can jump off from here. We're kind of just kind of smack Where dab in the middle. 35? It goes from 23 down to 58 is what I have showing here on screen. I feel like somewhere in this middle area. Like, I definitely feel like it's better than Push was. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's definitely not better than those ones up at the top there, the Supermans and Blades and such. Um, so somewhere in the middle here. I mean, is it better? Is it worse than The Incredible Hulk? Uh, oh, wow. Incredible Hulk at 31. Um, I don't know if it, I don't think it's worse than the Incredible Hulk, but I also don't think it's better than the Rocketeer. So I don't know. Or Dark Man. Our rankings what about are fucked. Between, um, what about between um, Super and the Green Hornet? Okay. I, I could dig that. I mean, yeah. Is it okay? I don't think it's better than Super, but I don't know if I think it's better than the Green Hornet. I think it's better than the Green Hornet. Okay. Okay. Personally, yeah, I I, I think it executed what it wanted to do way better than the Green Hornet. Mm -hmm. That's true. The Green Hornet was trying to do a lot of stuff that it didn't quite get there with. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What do you think, Al? Where are you? Uh, it's it's hard. It's. Tell us more. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to puke on something. <laughs> Does that always happen when it gets hot? <laughs> um, this is a difficult ranking. Uh, but, um, it, but it's not. <laughs> it Pass. is if you take it seriously. Um, <laughs> 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 Uh, um, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> should we take it seriously? And the answer is no, <laughs> no, we should not. Um, <laughs> uh, so, all right. Um, you're passing now. You're not going to weigh in on this one. Uh, yeah, I don't, cause I agreed with your sentiment that, uh, <laughs> I thought, uh, uh, the Rocketeer and Darkman were, are better movies. Yeah. Absolutely. Also in retrospect, I think they're probably better movies than the Incredible Hulk. So, <laughs> so yeah once again our list is perhaps weird <laughs> um but okay i mean i can live with between super and the green hornet because yeah it doesn't matter yeah <laughs> so i'm our, not gonna sleep over it yeah i mean well yeah i i'll 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 take some pills so i won't yeah all right, that's where we will put it. Smack dab at number uh, 30. Number 30 on our big list. Um, that is it for Chronicle, which means it's time to look at next week. And next week, we will be watching Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. Mm -hmm. hmm. Um, guys, I did not realize this. I've never seen this movie. I just looked it up for the first time today. You know what character is in this movie? Mephisto? Yes. Huh. Fuck yes. I did not realize that. I had no idea. Mephisto confirmed. I had no <laughs> fucking idea Mephisto was in this movie. Um, so, cool. wow. Um, that is next week, Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. Until then, thanks for listening, everybody. This has been uh, your host, Rose Smiley. I'm sneaking around your house and smiling. <laughs> I'm Josh Cece, and I have an election coming up. I don't have time for any of this. I'm Brian Lesh, and I am flying directly to Tibet. <laughs> I'm Alaric Weber, and liquid nitrogen keeps me this cool. <laughs> I, you, thought, I thought it was you lose an extremity that way I thought it was just pure owlness so alright sunglasses <laughs> thanks everybody we'll see you next week bye bye guys <laughs> <laughs>